This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 26, Pension Fund Operations. Pension plans provide savings for employees that can be used for retirement. Pension plans invest the money set aside by employers for their retirement in the financial markets until those funds need to be distributed, and for this reason, pension plans serve as major institutional investors. Chapter 26 includes seven learning objectives. First, to distinguish between defined benefit versus defined contribution pension plans. Second, to explain how pension funds participate in financial markets. Third, to discuss the regulation of private pension plans. Fourth, to discuss underfunding of public pension plans. Fifth, to discuss corruption and defined benefit plans. Sixth, to explain how pension funds are managed. And the last learning objective is to explain the key factors that influence the performance of pension portfolios. Let's begin by discussing the types of pension plans. A defined benefit plan precisely describes the benefits to be received by employees. The contributions are dictated by the benefits that will eventually be provided. A defined benefit plan uses a formula to determine how much it will provide to employees upon retirement based on their salary level and the number of years of full-time service. A defined benefit plan requires the employer to set aside or contribute funds that can be invested until they are to be distributed to employees after retirement. Some defined benefit plans might also require employees to contribute to the pension plan while they're employed. A defined contribution plan provides benefits that are determined by the accumulated contributions made to the fund while the employee is employed and by the fund's investment performance. Employees' freedom to decide how to invest the money set aside for their retirement in a defined contribution plan is a key characteristic that distinguishes these plans from defined benefit plans where the managers of the pension fund determine how the money set aside for retirement is invested. If financial markets are weak for a few years, the investments made by defined benefit plans will likely perform poorly, but the obligations to the retirees covered by those plans are not affected by weak market conditions. Now let's look at pension fund participation in financial markets. Because many pension funds are very large, they're major participants in financial markets. Many of the investments made by pension funds in the financial markets finance economic growth as illustrated in this exhibit. The contributions of employees and employers are invested in corporate stocks and bonds, enabling corporations to expand. The contributions are also used to purchase treasury and municipal bonds, which support federal and municipal government spending. Many investments made by pension funds require the brokerage services of securities firms. Managers of pension funds instruct the securities firms on the type and amount of investment instruments to purchase. This exhibit summarizes the interactions between pension funds and other financial institutions. This exhibit summarizes how pension fund managers participate in various financial markets. Because the composition of pension fund portfolios is usually denominated by stocks and bonds, pension fund managers are major players in those markets. Pension fund managers also participate in money and mortgage markets to fill out the remainder of their portfolios. They sometimes utilize the futures and options markets as well to partially insulate their portfolio performance from interest rate and or stock market movements. Because pension funds are heavily invested in corporations through their large purchases of stocks and corporate bonds, they can exert a degree of governance over corporations. By exerting pressure to ensure that the managers and board members of corporations serve the best interests of their shareholders, pension funds may potentially improve the performance of corporations. The third learning objective in the chapter relates to regulation of private pension plans. Private pension plans are created to serve employees in the private sector and are governed by federal regulations. To set up a pension fund, a sponsor corporation may establish a trust pension fund through a commercial bank's trust department or an insured pension fund through an insurance company. A pension plan's vesting schedule represents the time at which rights to assets that have accumulated in the employee's pension fund cannot be taken away. Employees whose employment period is shorter than the vesting schedules are not allowed to retain the assets accumulated within their respective pension funds. The Employment Retirement Income Security Act, or ERISA, allows employees that change employers to transfer any vested amount into the private pension plan or their new employer or to invest it in an individual retirement account, or IRA. Under the Act's provisions, the benefits provided by the pension plan must be proportionately equal relative to income so that employees earning lower wages receive equal treatment. Private pension plans are considered non-qualified if they don't satisfy the criteria set out in the Act. The ERISA established the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, or PBGC, 
to provide insurance on private pension plans and guarantees that participants in private defined benefit plans will receive their benefits upon retirement. If the private pension fund is incapable of fully providing the benefits promised, the PBGC will make up at least part of the difference. It's difficult for a pension plan to perfectly forecast the amount of money it will need to pay employees after their retirement. In previous years, many corporations used overly optimistic projections of the rate of return to be earned on the money set aside in their pension funds, which allowed them to set aside a smaller amount of funds in anticipation of future pension payment obligations. This strategy caused many private pension funds to be underfunded, meaning that they did not set aside sufficient funds to meet the expected payouts until the employees retired. If a pension fund is underfunded, it will ultimately have to access additional funds to offset this deficiency so that it has sufficient funds to cover its payment obligations when employees retire. To deal with the problem of underfunded pension plans, Congress passed the Pension Protection Act of 2006, which requires a company with an underfunded defined benefit pension plan to increase its contributions to the pension plans so that it will eventually be fully funded. The next major concept in the chapter relates to underfunded public defined benefit pension plans. Every government agency that offers a defined benefit plan should automatically set aside funds to ensure that it will have sufficient funding for all participating employees upon retirement. Many government agencies assume they'll earn a high rate of return on their pension fund investments, which justifies setting aside a smaller amount of money to meet those future obligations. But if the rate of return on the investments is lower than assumed, their pension plans can become underfunded. Some pension funds are underfunded for political reasons. In particular, some governments may not set aside sufficient funding for their pension plans because they prefer to use the funds for other purposes, which can lead to serious underfunding problems in the long run that will ultimately have to be corrected by either higher state taxes, reduced government employee pensions, or reduced spending on education or other services. Some governments might attempt to correct their budget deficits caused by underfunded pensions by issuing debt. However, some governments with large pension underfunding that use this strategy have defaulted on their debt. In some cases, a pension plan that's underfunded may attempt to correct its funding deficiency by implementing a more aggressive investment strategy to increase its return on investments. However, this strategy can backfire because a risky investment strategy may result in losses that could cause the pension fund to be even more underfunded. Some government agencies have attempted to solve the problems caused by underfunded pensions by increasing the retirement age at which employees can start receiving their pensions, requiring employees to contribute a larger proportion of their salary to the pension fund, or reducing the retirement benefits to employees. Some government agencies have considered raising taxes or cutting services to resolve the pension underfunding problem. Government officials who use pension money for political favors or other reasons instead of allocating the money toward pension funds have rarely been held accountable for the problems they caused. Laws could be improved to make government officials more accountable if they allow pension funds to be underfunded by a specific degree. The pension underfunding problem is possible only with defined benefit plans and not with defined contribution plans because the money to be allocated in defined contribution plans is immediately set aside for employees each pay period. A government's shift from a defined benefit plan to a defined contribution plan wouldn't resolve any underfunding problems that already exist, since the defined contribution plan would apply only to new employees, but it could at least prevent additional underfunding in the future. Now let's look at corruption of defined benefit pension funds. The management of each defined benefit pension fund is guided by its trustees, who have a fiduciary responsibility to serve the retirees who receive pension benefits. However, the trustees may be tempted to make decisions that are mostly intended to benefit themselves at the expense of the pension fund participants that they represent. When trustees select a particular investment company to manage a public defined benefit plan, they can generate millions of dollars of annual income for the investment company from the fees that the company charges the pension fund for its portfolio management services. For this reason, bribes from investment companies to trustees have occurred. Some trustees of public pension plans are politicians who are campaigning for other political positions. Investment companies may make contributions to a trustee's election campaign in the hope of being hired by the trustee as consultants to manage a portfolio of the pensions funds. Some trustees of public pension plans have engaged in actions that favor particular pension participants or are simply inappropriate. Examples include making retirement payments to employees who are still working or providing excess pension benefits. Sometimes trustees of the public pension funds are hired for political reasons and don't have the financial qualifications to adequately oversee the management of the funds. 
Consequently, some public pension funds have been mismanaged, and the taxpayers or the pension fund participants may ultimately have to incur the cost of political hiring decisions. The next learning objective in the chapter relates to pension fund management. Some defined pension plans are managed by life insurance companies. Contributions to these plans, called insured plans, are often used to purchase annuity policies so that the life insurance companies can provide benefits to employees upon retirement. The insurance company becomes the legal owner of the assets and is allowed to maintain only a small portion of its assets as equities. Therefore, insurance companies concentrate on investing the pension fund contributions as bonds and mortgages. Other pension funds are managed by the trust departments of financial institutions such as commercial banks. Although the day-to-day investment decisions of the trust departments are controlled by the managing institution, the corporation owning the pension fund usually specifies general guidelines that the institution should follow. In determining their asset allocation, pension fund managers have to balance return against risk. If pension funds can achieve higher returns on their existing investments, they can more easily meet their obligations to the participants in the plan. However, the strategy of attempting to earn a higher return with risky investments can backfire and cause large losses. Pension fund portfolio managers who are concerned about their exposure to risk can implement strategies to hedge that risk. Another way that pension funds might manage risk is to consider using a passive management strategy, such as investing in index mutual funds, which would perform as well as market benchmarks that represent the general stock market, bond market, and real estate market. Pension fund management can be classified according to the strategy used to manage the portfolio. With a matched funding strategy, investment decisions are made with the objective of generating cash flows that match planned outflow payments. An alternative strategy is projective funding, which offers managers more flexibility in constructing a pension portfolio that can benefit from expected market and interest rate movements. Some pension funds segment their portfolios, with a portion being used for matching funding and the rest for projective funding. The last concept in the chapter relates to the performance of pension funds. Pension funds commonly maintain a portfolio of stocks as well as a portfolio of bonds. The change in the value of a pension fund's portfolio focusing on stocks can be modeled as a function of changes in general stock market conditions, MKT, and the abilities of the pension fund's management, MANAP. The stock portfolio's performance is usually closely related to market conditions. Stock portfolio performance can vary among pension funds in a particular time period because of the difference in the fund's management abilities. The composition of stocks in a pension fund's portfolio is determined by the fund's portfolio managers. In addition, a pension fund's operating efficiency affects the expenses that the fund incurs, thereby affecting its performance. The change in the value of a pension fund's bond portfolio, including mortgage and mortgage-backed securities, can be modeled as a function of changes in the risk-free rate, the risk premium, and portfolio manager abilities. Prices of bonds tend to be inversely related to changes in the risk-free interest rate. During periods when the risk-free rate declines substantially, the required return by bondholders decreases and most bond portfolios managed by pension funds perform well. During periods when long-term interest rates are low, the future return that can be earned by pension funds on low-risk, long-term bonds is very low if the investor holds those bonds until maturity. However, there's significant interest rate risk because long-term rates could rise from the prevailing levels over time, which would cause prices to decline. When economic conditions deteriorate, the risk premium required by bondholders usually increases, which results in a higher required rate of return and lower prices on risky bonds. During periods when the risk premiums increase, bond portfolios of pension funds that contain a high proportion of risky bonds tend to perform poorly. The performance levels of bond portfolios can vary as a result of differences in management abilities. If a pension fund's portfolio managers can effectively adjust the bond portfolio in response to accurate forecasts of changes in interest rates or shifts in bond risk premiums, that fund's bond portfolio should experience relatively high performance. As time passes, portfolio managers might change the composition of a pension portfolio, which can alter the portfolio's potential return as well as its risk. A pension fund's performance can be evaluated by comparing it to a passive strategy benchmark representing the same mix of securities. Some research has found that managed pension portfolios perform no better than market indexes. During the credit crisis, some pension portfolios actually performed much worse than benchmark market indexes because their managers invested heavily in risky mortgages and mortgage-backed securities.